This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and I don't know why I made that more dramatic than it needed to be, but either way, Dave Nixon. And um, today on the podcast, I want to talk about, um, I mean, technically it's sort of looking at things competitively or cooperatively, um, but it's moving from a, a win-lose, win-lose mindset, which would be competitive, uh, a win-win mindset, which would be um, cooperative, to a, a win-win-win, which is more of a, a integrated, um, process-driven m- mindset, so to speak. And um, I'm going to go through now. The, I, I, I talk heavily about the win-win-win. However, that's not to shame or to put down the co- the, the, the competitive spirit of win-lose. Um, everything, as I always say, is contextual and heavily is driven from a, um, what's it called, uh, I suppose, uh, intention um for the individual and so coming to a particular situation with a competitive uh, frame of mind can be extremely beneficial in fact it can be the difference between you know well obviously winning and not winning but it also can be the the difference between inspiring people it can be the difference between um, encouraging somebody else to improve and a whole range of other areas and other things as well so this, this isn't saying that the lowest form of frame of mind when it comes to dealing with the situation is competitive because it's not. It's it's hand in hand exactly the same as cooperative. So um, because a lot of the time let somebody if somebody handles a loss, let's say that they lose something, a game bid or whatever it might be, that can help give them the the uh, personal opportunity for insight to be able to come back better, bigger, better and stronger. So it, it, win lose is more of a static like uh, point of view. And, and expanding on that allows us to really start seeing that that loss can help that person turn around and have a win next time. So, yeah, win-lose from a competitive standpoint is fine, but uh, I want to move on to this idea of knowing when to be in a competitive frame of mind compared to knowing when you're going to be in a cooperative frame of mind, which is a win-win. And the thing about this is that, that uh, for me personally, I've definitely leaned into cooperative a lot more than competitive in most areas of my life for most of my life now um, that has served in many areas but it's also left me naive and open and vulnerable in so many others Um, and then potentially weak when there was an opportunity to really um, win something so to speak now wins a general term I mean it's semantics in this circumstance so let it be whatever it means to you I'm if you're curious about what it means to me then I'm more than happy to uh, open up that discussion another time but yeah, so there's been times where being competitive would have been significantly better for me, but being cooperative almost allowed myself to be um, a weaker competitor and then I would lose when I had the opportunity to potentially win. So it's really quite interesting. So that's why looking at either a competitive or a cooperative frame of mind allows us to realize when am I going to deploy this now if I'm always competitive then the issue is is that everything's often black and white I'm either going to win you're going to lose or vice versa I'm the best you're the worst vice versa and what that can do is that there's times where a cooperative frame of mind would actually allow everyone to develop and move forward but having that competitive frame of mind even if you win in the short term you lose in the long term and so it really is allowing ourselves to step back and really make the decision of when we're going to be deploying these frames of mind. So, I mean, competitive, uh, cooperative can be seen in many, it can be definitely in like a, a, a relationship with your significant other. It could be in a business sense. Um, sometimes people see it like with, you know, in my industry, I would have a gym and a physio or a gym and a nutritionist, but it can be gyms. I've got plenty of mates with gyms and, and, referring you know externally to them as necessary and then in return they refer back and so but even if they didn't it's like if I have a client who I know would fit in well to that community in that space then then I'm, I'm doing a disservice it's a loss for me based on my integrity and a loss for them if I don't refer 
So even if the other gym never referred to me, it's irrelevant. I remember hearing a story a little while ago. Um, it was actually two guys that I knew and they were both within, uh, definitely within business. One was more of an uh, accounting um, accountant sort of business space and the other person was more of a marketing and business space. And um, they really didn't see eye to eye on, on many things. And then uh, um, the marketing um, marketing guy um, ha- had a guy come to him and said, I want to do some work with you. And then when they asked who referred him, he said, oh, this other person. Um, and uh, that was really interesting for him. And then so naturally the marketing guy actually thanked the accounting guy. And... Um, and the accounting guy is like, yeah, like he goes, I know you're good at what you do. I disagree with a lot of things, but this guy needed your services. And it was just full fucking ego aside, opinion aside. This is what this person wanted. This is what this person needed. And it was just like, that's how that I'm like, that's a fantastic frame of mind of being able to choose when to be competitive and being able to choose when to be cooperative. And so um, that was, a, I feel like a perfect example of knowing when to choose either one. Now, I would say that also leans into the integrated or the spiral view. In the book Spiral Dynamics, Don Beck, Don Beck, Claire Gray, so, so Spiral Dynamics was, um, is, is a book by Don Beck and, and Dan Cowan, I believe the names are. Um, Beck and Cowan, yes. And it was based on the developmental psychologist Claire Graves um, work with um, the spiral. So the spiral being development levels of consciousness. Ken Wilber's gone on and he's done a lot more work with this. However, this was the first book that I read on it. And what they, what they were speaking about was a win-win-win was a situation where it was a win for me, it's a win for you, and it's a win for effectively the greater good. So the spiral was what they looked at. But you can take that as the greater good. And what that means is that it's a win for the community. So if we had like um, a, a big oil company and then a company that basically uh, – is taking care of or meant to take care of a particular environment such as look the Great Barrier Reef here in Australia. So let's say that the, whoever's meant to be taking care of the Great Barrier Reef and a big oil company shake hands on a really big, fantastic deal and it's a win for the government side of things there and a win for um, the oil company. But in the process of the world and the global viewpoint and a process frame of mind of how things will develop, it was a loss for that, then that's a win-win-lose. To these two individuals, it's a win-win. Corporations-wise, it's a win-win. But from a spiral point of view, from this integrated, long-term process frame of mind, it's a loss. And so this is where it looks past just a win-lose competitive and win-win cooperative to is it a win-win-win? Is it a win for me? Is it a win for you? And then is it a win for the greater good? Is it a win for the community? Is it a win for long-term viewpoint and so forth and sometimes we get stuck in just seeing the shorter frame of, and short could be just short could be five years that, that some persons that some people that's long term in some circumstances that's long term but in some circumstances that's that's very very short term so it's looking at going how is the decisions we're making today going to impact this world in a hundred years time and that's a fantastic question because it allows us to open up and start shifting away from a static frame of mind to a very process-driven frame of mind to realize that the decisions that we make today are going to impact our generation, the next generation, the next generation's generation. And that's an example because there's a lot of people today walking around with their grandparents' values and they don't realize that, right? There's values that help their grandparents get through the depression um, and what's happened, or maybe their grandparents, parents, whatever, what's happened is that those values that helped them get through to the depression were passed on to their kids, then on to their kids, and then on to their kids, and it's literally the same as an organization saying, that's just how we do it here. Why? The landscape's changed. The climate, the economy, everything has changed, and we're staying the same, and so this is why it's so crucial to, to question our beliefs because the world world changes, the world adapts, and, and, and if we don't, then we die, whatever that means to you, right? So this win-win-win idea allows us to really think long-term and process-driven about the decisions that we're making with um, ourself, our health, the way that we uh, interact with others, and the way that we interact with the environment. So interesting stuff, but yes... Win, 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 but also know when to win, when to go competitive, also know when to go cooperative. Otherwise, team, that's me done for today. If you did find this podcast, 
beneficial. It would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. And if you haven't already, make sure you jump on Facebook, search Move Prep Online, join the conversation now. I'd love to see you in there. Um, and uh, other than that, I think uh, that's me done for today. Until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick and slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. To be everything at once Be unblinded, be unlearned Be unbridled and unburned